So we're talking about the blue sky. And we have some ideas in here about moving charges in, in nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere as sort of playing a role in being responsible for the blue sky. So to be sort of clear about it here that the nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere, it isn't really like the whole atmosphere is responsible for this. Where this primarily happens is really in the upper is really in the upper atmosphere. And so what I mean by that is if we have the Earth down here like this and we're standing here on Earth and sort of living and breathing sort of in this region here, it, it wouldn't so much be the air molecules that are immediately around us that are causing the blue sky. In fact, you know, the blue sky looks to be very high up. And so indeed it would be. And so what happens is, as I sort of alluded to in the last video, that if light is coming in from the sun, let's just say I'll draw it as a light ray at this point here, say some light's coming in from the sun, if it sort of went this way right by the planet like this, it would be invisible to us because the light ray would have just, light ray, pardon me, would have just passed us by and nothing is sort of going on here that would cause it to go down into our eyes. So if we look straight up, we would just see blackness because nothing is causing these photons, as I said, to come down into our eyes. There would have to be something in the way to send them down. Like for, for example, suppose it up here in the sky, you know, I don't know how this would happen, but suppose there was like a rock floating here or something like that. The rock is something that could take this light ray and write this intersection point, as you know, the law of reflection could send the light ray down into our eye so we could see it, but that's not happening. I'm just saying that, that something's got to send the light down our way before we're going to see it. So if we have a light ray like this that's just passing on by, we wouldn't see anything. So that does sort of give you the clue that, well, there's got to be something up here then that's taking some of that sunlight that's coming in from this direction. So if the sun, say, is clear over here, here's the sun, and all these light rays are coming off it, something has got to be taking those light rays as they leave the sun and stream by our planet and sending them, send them down into our eyes. There's got to be something up there to send those light rays down. And indeed, there, there, there are. There is. It's the nitrogen oxygen. It's the gases in our atmosphere. But we're talking about way, way, way up in the upper atmosphere like that where I won't even draw it in blue to give you the, you know, to say the, the molecules aren't blue or anything like that. It's just that way up here, there might be a nitrogen there and an oxygen there, and a nitrogen there, and an oxygen there. Very wispy up there, and sort of not dense at all. Like, no way could you breathe up there or do anything like that because the molecules are just very far and few in between. And so believe it or not, it's those that when a light wave from the sun comes in, it's those little wispy ones like that one right there, and then that one right there, that then when they get hit by a light wave from the sun, those are the ones that are going to start sort of going up and down and up and down and start oscillating as these little positive and negative charge pairs that you know molecules to be in there. So it might be really sh tall, then very short, then very tall, but that's sort of the, the up and down and up and down that this light wave is going to cause of that wispy atom. So there was a nice movie many years ago called Gravity that has some very nice computer graphics that will give you a little bit of an idea of what that very, very, very upper atmosphere is like. So here, take a look.
I hope you enjoyed that video clip and what I wanted you to notice about it was if the earth is all the way down here I hope when you were watching it you sort of saw that sort of thin blue line all the way in the back and that is our atmosphere and you can already see the bluish color that is the um, the thin wispy N2 and O2 that I was referring to up there and what I wanted you to notice about in the upper atmosphere other than all that good action of the astronaut there Sandra Bullock trying to get back into the spacecraft I thought the uh, effects and animation were just great in that movie is that when that that big satellite or whatever she was trying to get back into was sort of here uh, you know it sort of had all these structures and stuff and those I don't know I guess there are some solar panels and some things she was trying to grab onto I hope you noticed some of this these little wispy things that were coming off of edges of it as sort of the satellite was going very fast in that direction and of course uh, you know, she was up here crawling all over it, something like this, maybe upside down with her hands, trying to desperately trying to get in and all that sort of thing. These wispy things that were sort of going by, sort of like these, shh, 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 that is this spacecraft encountering those very, very first few nitrogen and oxygen molecules in our upper atmosphere. So she's starting to pass through. I think that the orbit of that satellite is starting to decay and go back down to Earth, and so she's starting to hit the whole structure, starting to hit some of these molecules, and that's sort of what this. Whoosh, 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 kind of thing where the wispy thing is going by that is our upper atmosphere so just like you see them coming off the control structures or the uh, structure of this spacecraft those are exactly the ones also that they hit by, that get hit by the sun's light rays and start oscillating up and down the charges of their structure start moving up and down all the same stuff okay we'll get this wrapped up in the next video